Good morning, YouTube. How you doing? Kevin here with some carburation. Or, if you're from where I live, carburation. But, for all intents and purposes, we're going to call this a carburetor. A fuel air metering system. A simple job is to mix the air and the fuel together in a proper ratio for your engine. So, anyway, we're going to talk about this uh, for a little bit. And I hope um, this helps you out. And I also want to answer a bunch of questions on carburation and air filtration. Okay, sorry about that. Um, UPS just came my new phone. <laughs> anyway, all right, so we're going to be talking about carburation and um, this air filtering metering system. Now, this bike right here is a, K, a KD80. It is a parts bike um, that I am putting together. So the side cover was already removed. So I want to touch base on that real quick. That's only held on with three screws. One here, one here, and one down bottom. Okay, and then that cover comes off. And then what you're going to remove is you're going to remove the choke um, knob that goes up top here. It's held on with a cotter pin. And um, it's a real simple looking uh, button. This is choke right on it. Let's see if I've got one here. Just choke right on it and fits right on top of that shaft. You're gonna pop that off and then you're gonna slide your boot up. Okay, get that right up out of your way. Then you're gonna loosen up this this um, lock ring right here, and that houses the slide in your needle jet. Okay, which we're gonna touch base. This is the slide, that's the needle. Okay, there at the adventure is the fuel when you uh, throttle up, it basically it pulls up and then you might notice it's tapered and the reason why it's tapered is as you're pulling up it's gonna let more fuel in so it it's, keeps the ratio proper there are several different carburetors used on these bikes and hold on, I'm trying to get comfortable here hold on one second okay a little better I had to get a bucket to sit on oh, I'm getting old here people I'm 40 anyway so, a couple of things I wanted to go over now that I, I explained to you about the first steps of removing. The second step is how do you unscrew the carburetor? And that's a real simple one. There's a little plug right here on the side. You're going to pop this plug out right there. And then you can stick your Phillips screwdriver right inside here and then loosen it up and then it'll come out. And then you can slide, then the whole carburetor will slide up. So that's how you remove the carburetor and it'll, it'll all come out and don't forget your fuel line. Now, there is a lot of questions on, my plug is missing. Um, I pulled this off, there's a lot of crap at the bottom. Why is that? Um, what's going on with all that? And I don't think my air filter is working because my carburetor keeps clogging up with crap. So, first I want to explain something to you that this is a sealed unit. This is designed to keep out water. It's designed to keep only, it's an air box. I want you to keep that in mind. It's not a side cover. It's literally an air box. It's, to, it's designed to channel the air to the carburetor. Now what happens is your air filter is in this box right here. The air, the fresh air comes through a little, little inlet down bottom, flows through your filter, gets cleaned, so only clean air goes through the center of it, travels down this intake boot into your engine and comes over this way through this, this whole opening area right there. All right. And then comes around and fills up this whole, the whole side cover, this whole air box with air. Now, if you have this plug off right here in the back, now you're bypassing the air filter. So now dirt, water and debris, or it depends on the type of person you are, Debris, um, will get in there and it will fill up down bottom, uh, down here, okay? Now, this has to be a sealed unit. What do I mean by sealed unit? That means that you're gonna have grommets and plugs and all that type of stuff in there. So one thing you need, which this bike does not have right now because I'm working on it, but this is supposed to be a grommet around the fuel line so that stops water and debris from getting in here. You have another one right here for your two cables, or your cable and your oil line, I'm sorry, your cable and your oil line, right here, right on this wall. 
and that stops water from coming in on that side which there shouldn't be anyway but just in case it does this side doesn't require a gasket this side does there is no gasket underneath this cover keep that in mind so water and debris can get in there unfortunately it should have a gasket but they don't and then water water can get into here so make sure you get your, your uh, grommet on there the other thing that's very very overlooked is the breather down bottom here now this bike right here has no filter I don't know if you can see it or not but there is literally oh no you can't but there is no filter in there and that is a replaceable part and it's actually very easy to get you can get them on eBay for like five ten bucks and just a couple of screws right here and it pops in it's a filter and that right there basically allows fuel or water whatever may be in there out but nothing in it's like a check valve almost um, you definitely don't want to run the bike without that and go through a puddle because if you do you're gonna stop bringing water and crap up through here and it will build up pretty quick so you want to make sure you have the following a filter in here you want to make sure you have a good gasket around the whole surface if you don't have a gasket you can use RTV silicone just keep in mind the next time you go take it apart it's going to be a bitch grommet here grommet there and your plug right over here okay and make sure your boot is in good shape for when you put that on there because that all keeps the air filter box sealed and then the air filter can do its job so now we touch base on all that um, I have uh, another question that came up is I have fuel coming out of these tubes well actually not out of tubes the air filter box is on there I have fuel leaking out from underneath here well the fuel is coming out from these tubes because your float is incorrectly adjusted or you have debris or debris between your needle seat your needle and seat and that right there would keep the float open and then fuel would fill up past the uh, past the two tubes in the float bowl and basically you can see the different different heights for different reasons and then fuel will leak right out through the bottom that is a hollow those are hollow tubes there's nothing in them they're clear and it will leak right out which is another reason why you want to keep the seal because air moist air can go right up into these tubes and cause condensation on the inside of this bowl carburetor bowl and then what you're going to end up with is that that is they ran this out of fuel completely and then basically just left the cover off and then it just got condensation and that's what happens I sat for so long with condensation so all right we're going to talk about um, the drain they come with a grommet for the bottom too which you should have on there this grommet that's something very important without it it fills up inside the bowl with this grommet on here which fits underneath here okay this channels the fuel out the hole and bypasses the filter so the filter doesn't get destroyed so you want to keep this grommet and you want to make sure you have it in place now I have a lot of people also asking how come these carburetors don't have a carburetor drain it looks like there was a place for one. Well, I'm going to give you guys a little tip. If you go and look for a carburetor for a Suzuki AC100, it takes the same carburetor. A lot of people don't know that. Suzuki AC100 takes the same carburetor. Now, here's the kicker. It only has one drain plug, so you can still use your boot. Like one of these drain ports. There's only one on it. Once one sealed off because it's not needed you really don't need two of them I think the other second one is on there just to hold the grommet up to be honest with you and then right here is a drain plug Yep Right there. So same carburetors are found on the AC 100 Suzuki um, Doesn't matter what year So just type in on eBay AC 100 and then you'll see that carburetor and if you can't find parts on KE 100s or whatever you can also look at the Suzuki um, AC 100 has the same carburetor and all the parts are interchangeable little tip for you okay second off um, 
we got uh, so let's address some stuff here I want to address the needle jets main jets and everything else okay so there is different types of carburetor. You see the style right here. This is a newer style of carburetor. Um, you'll see how it's only got a little plug in there. But then you're looking at this video going, oh, no, 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 no. Mine has an adjustment screw right there. How come? Because that adjustment screw right there is right there. This is not self-adjusting. You have, there's an adjustment for this. I'm going to show you where that's located. It's located right on the side there. You pop out that little welch plug. There's the idle mixture screw. There's that screw is now on that side. That's how they did it. And then see right here, it's sealed up on this side. Why did they do that? I don't know. I think they rerouted the idle circuit in that carburetor. Kept the same body, just reworked it a little differently. So, just so you know, if you have that little plug and you're like, oh, I can't adjust my carburetor, it's non adjustable. Yes, it is. Pop that plug. You'll see that screw, and there's your adjustment. Okay, so there's that. There are different carburetors you may find, because I deal with a lot of different ones. Um, this carburetor right here is from an earlier KE in the 70s. And you might notice that the, I, I don't have all the parts and pieces to this one, because this one was in pretty bad shape, but you might notice it's a square plug, a square bowl. Well, rectangle. Sorry, I got to learn my shapes. Kidney garden. Best six years of my life. Um, so anyway, this one has a square bowl to it, whereas this one has... Oh, I'll break that gasket. You might find it has a rounded shape bowl. See? They are not interchangeable, and the parts aren't interchangeable. However, for you people who have earlier KE100s, you pop out that plug... And you will find that adjustment right there. That's where you would adjust the earlier style KE100s, KMs, and KD80s. Basically, it is the same carburetor. It has to choke in the same spot. Tastes the same. Well, not the same. The diameter is different. These, these two isolating um, rings are not interchangeable for the intake versions. And then, and the slides are not interchangeable. However, they are two different kits. So, I wanted to share, I wanted to touch base with that. The chokes are not interchangeable either. Um, everything is different on them. They are completely two different animals. However, I do like these, the newer style carburetors. They are very throw, um, throttle responsive um, in comparison. So, the intake diameter is the same. They are built to the same specifications. However, they don't use a style anymore and it's very difficult to get a kit. There are tons of kits for these ones. And the AC100 carburetor bowl will not fit that earlier style. I just want to make sure you know that. And um, so that's where we're at with that. Okay, so now we have that covered. And the other question was jets, the main jets. What are my jets supposed to be? I think I have a jet kit in my bike. I don't know. I don't know if I got the right jet or whatever. So I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to hold it there for a second on the carburetor jets, what your bike is supposed to have in it. So I flipped open the page. I don't know. I'm going to get out of the sun, direct sunlight here with this. Okay, so this is from my manual. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna try holding it steady for you guys. Hold on one second, so you guys can look, take a good look, and pause. You just when you get to it, pause it. You know. Okay, so the specifications are there. Um, let's see if I can get a closer look. I'm just trying to get you guys this information. There are a lot of um, I know this is, this is difficult to do. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to um, shoot I'm trying to think how to do this.
I don't know if you guys can, you guys can't blow up your screen on YouTube. Um, well, anyway, the shows you the different. Well, that's just a pretty good picture right there. Yeah, I can open it up like this. I don't know if you're getting all the information. I hope you guys are. Um, if you guys have any questions, I can look it up. Just comment, and I will I will get you that information. And um, what I'm going to talk about right now is identifying your carburetor. Because a lot of people are like, I don't know if I have that McConey. Or well, it could be that McConey. Oh, shit, I don't know. Does my carburetor take a 77.5? Or does it take the 75? Or does it take an 82? Or an 80? Or a 90? Holy shit. You know, which one do I have? Well, I'm going to show you where your numbers are located. A lot of people don't know where the numbers are located on the carburetor. Okay, back at the carbs. Now, if you're looking at your carburetor and you don't see no numbers on it, you panic. Holy shit, where is it? This is my test carburetor. See? Test, test, test. If you look on the top up here, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's right here on the top. And they're stamped in. This carburetor right here is worn off, but that's where they're located. They're located on the back side of the carburetor, up on that bank. This one here you can see pretty well. Hold on. I don't know if you guys can see that all too well, but it's up on the top up there on the bank. Right on both sides of the halves. Anyway, that's where they're located. You're going to have to see what your carburetor is and see what you got for a jet and all that type of stuff. So there's, there's that. And on the book, it tells you where the needle, this piece right here, is supposed to be set to. Because a lot of people say, oh, it's got to be on the third, it's got to be on the second. I have mine on the fourth. It depends on what you got for jetting and how you're setting your bike up. And it's not something you, it's more of a trial and error thing. You don't just set it and forget it. it it's you're gonna take some, it's gonna take some practice to get to that point. So they're not, they're not easy to uh, dial in. You know, certain things, and you're not gonna have all around power either. It's gonna affect different things. It's gonna affect your top end. It's gonna affect your bottom end. I get a lot of questions about my bike's only doing 55. Why is that? Well, I mean, it could be a number of things. It could be your gear ratio. It could be your um, your bike's not running smooth or properly. So here it is. Now, a couple things I've seen a lot of. This needle right here, you can push it in with your finger, and it'll just stay in there. It's not supposed to stay in there. It's supposed to be fixed like that. Well, how do I get it? How do I know? How do I get it out? You pull back the spring. I'm trying to do this one-handed. Being careful not to damage the spring doing this. I'm actually going to pause it for a second and pull the spring back. Okay, now I got the spring back. I rotated it a half turn, so it's off to one side, and you'll see there's a clip in there. Okay, so I'm going to drop that clip right there out. That's the retainer clip that holds it in there. And then your needle will pop out as if by magic. Just slides out. These grooves right here are where they're set to. This one is set on the second um, notch. You can set it to the third notch, or the fourth notch, or the fifth notch. As you're doing that though, you're changing the ratio. It could be running leaner or richer, depending upon which way you're going. So you want to follow the instructions on the book for your particular motor. You also want to check this needle and make sure it's not bent. How do you check it? By removing the clip, put it on your kitchen table and rotate it. You should see a gap on the end because it's more narrower than right here on this part of the shank. 
it should have the same gap all the way through it should not wobble if it wobbles like this when you're rotating it your needle is bent also when you pull it out of here make sure you don't just let it drop and slam because that little drop and slam could be enough to hit the hit the needle and bend it um, these are very lightweight they're very fragile and they can bend easily so keep that in mind right there when you're doing that because these things can bend pretty easy and note on your um, your book or what you're setting it mark it down if you're gonna rebuild the carburetor when you take this out mark what number it's on that's very very important to note where things are or use your camera and take a picture of it on your cell phone that's another helpful tool okay so there's that and you might notice how I got the um, the carburetor spring off to one side. You just rotate it half turn. You're not going to ruin it. You're not going to hurt it. This is the slide. You're looking for corrosion. You're looking for scratching. You're looking for anything that will cause this thing to hang up or bind. This slide is in absolutely beautiful condition. But they're not always, always in absolute beautiful condition. So when you look on your book, it'll tell you needle. And that's the one you're going to want to adjust. So, right here was his needle jet. And you come over, it says second position. This one says, oh, I'm losing my thing here. Nope, not wrong one. Hold on. C clip grew from top. Third, third 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 so all these are on third and then uh, clip position from top depending on what carburetor you have here's the difference right here not applicable that means that it's fixed not applicable third third so if you have one your standard setting is the third um, depends upon what country you are I know on the on some people who are looking at my thing have a lot of bikes in different countries uh, Europe um, all over the place um, so I, I looked and checked and see what I got people looking and people watching from Japan all the way to England all the way to the United States Australia and everything else so this I got UK settings in here too so I hopefully that helps so where it says uh, third that's where the, that C clip I'll show you This C-clip is supposed to be sitting. And this one, I'm just taking this apart, is in the wrong groove. It is in the second groove. So this is going to have less power or performance issues. Um, or it might just run fine. I don't know. I haven't tested it yet. I just put it all together. So it's going to be my test cob. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix that. I'm going to pop that clip off and put it on the third. It's where it's supposed to be. Because that's where they all are. Um, so your main jets, depend upon what carburetor you have, range from 77 and a half to 77. Um, if you're in the UK, you got jets going as high as 90. I'm like, wow, that's some serious, that's some serious jetting. Um, so keep that in mind. And all right, let's talk about your idle mixture screws right there. What are they supposed to be at? How far do I turn them in? How do I know, like, I, I turned mine all the way and I couldn't turn it in no more. When you screw these needle jets in, keep in mind that they're brass. They can strip out easy and they can damage very easy. The tip of them, there's not much of a tip. I don't think I'm trying to show you here. The camera's getting all fuzzy here. Hold on, let's even clean the lens a little bit. Okay. So the tip of the needle let me put it up against something you can see it. There we go. All right, you want that nice and clean. There's no debris on. This is in my bucket of parts. I got bucket of parts. Um, you want to put this into it just seats, just touches, so it's it's not like, oh my god, and then back it off from there. You want to just touch, and then back it out your desired settings. So this is the idle mixture screw, and basically what I do is I check the book first, see if there is a, a setting for it. Oftentimes there is not. Let's see if this one has a mixed screw. She does not have anything for the mixed screw. 
fuel level. Turns out from close. Here we go. Pilot air screw. Turns out from close. One and a half, one and a half, one and a half, one and a half. One and a half, one and a half, one and a half. Alright, so it's one and a half turns out. That's normally what I put them at, and then you can adjust them from there. That right there will get your engine engine running. That is not your final adjustment. Keep that in mind. It says one and a half turns out, so that's what you're going to start at. That is a starting point. You may have to adjust it in or out depending upon the wear of your motor. So keep that in mind. It is an adjustment screw. But factory is one and a half turns. That's what they put it at, and then they adjust it from there. Keep in mind they're all brand new carburetors when they get in the factory, so that's what they can do. But as your bike wears and things change and fuels, you know, set in and all that, it's going to change. So, um, they got different needle, needle jets. And those correspond with the, um, the, jet, the main jets. So you have, you know, there's so many different variables on these when you're doing these carbs. So make sure you note what you do. Like on a welding carburetor, what I would do is before I screw the carburetor screw all the way in, you're going to take the, the main air jet out. This is the air jet right here. Okay. Before I take it out, I'm going to turn it in and count it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, my screwdriver on it. And I'm going to turn it one, a half. One, half. So this is at one and three quarters. Okay? This ain't one and a half. See that? It's one and it just seats right there and then I can back it off. So I'm going to write that down on my book. I'm going to say this carburetor right here was set to one and three quarter turns. Okay? Remember, quarters. Quarter turns. Okay? So I'm going to note that. And then, when I rebuild the carburetor and I get it all cleaned out, I'm going to turn my carburetor back to one and three quarters and see how it runs at that point. I'm not going to put it to the one and a half. I'm going to put it to one and three quarters because that's where the bike ran. Great. Keep in mind, piston ring wear, um, the rotary valve that's in there wears, all these different components wear. So you're going to be adjusting it to compensate for a different wear. So I got that part covered. I'm just trying to go over and make sure hopefully I don't miss anything. Where is the idle speed screw? This is the idle mixture screw. Where is the idle speed? The curb idle. The uh, When I take my hand off the throttle, how do I set that idle screw? That's up top here. And when you turn this, it lifts and lowers the slide. So that's going to adjust your idle speed. Okay, and you can turn that in and turn it out. And on the top of your plug, you might notice that knob right there. That's how you can adjust it. You don't even have to take the cover off to adjust it. You turn it to the right to slow it down, the left to speed it up. It's a real simple system. Very nice. Sometimes you'll find yourself turning it and nothing happens. And that's because that the button on the bottom side may have worn out the teeth. If the thing is too hard to turn. So then you do have to go ahead and take the, the rubber boot off to adjust it. All right. So we got that part done. Let's talk about jets. So let's get the, I mean, let's take the bowl off first. So let's, let's pop the bowl off this carburetor right here because it's already off the machine and less work to do. I already loosened everything up, so it should be, I'm going to pause you real quick and just take this bowl off. Okay, got all the screws off the carburetor bowl and we're going to remove the top. And this is what we're looking at right here. So, you have your main jet right here, which on the other end of this main jet is the idle, the uh, needle jet, which goes back in there and changes that flow. This is your high speed jet. This is a low speed jet. Now, I have people um, saying that they can't get that jet out. It is seized in there. What do I do to get it out? I have to clean it. It's plugged. So what I do is I take some penetrating oil and I spray it in there and I let it sit. I normally, I set a timer for like a half hour. And then I'll take a screwdriver, a flathead. Um, hold on a 
a second. I'm gonna go grab my flathead. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to go get my screwdriver, and then I forgot where I put it. <laughs> Typical guy. Okay, so these Craftsman screws, screwdrivers. See how it's wide? It, it narrowed down here, and it goes up to a nice wide part right here, and then narrows out. This is an incorrect screwdriver to try to force into that carburetor. If you do get it in there, you're going to strip the sides of it out and probably ruin the threads. Okay, so this is an incorrect screwdriver. I took a screwdriver. I took a screwdriver and I took a file to the sides of it. I grabbed a cheapie with a round shank. Easier for filing. So when I put it in there, it fits in there nicely. And I can turn it until I can feel the uh, jet. Once you feel the jet, then you can use some down pressure, push on it, and then turn it out. Okay, you can feel it like snap out. And then, voila, the jet's out. Okay, and then you can check it, make sure those holes. You can see through all the holes, and then you can hold it up to the light, and it's a very small orifice on this jet. So you make sure you can see right through it, you know? Sorry about the sunlight. So make sure you can see right through that little jet. You make sure all the holes are clear. Now when you put it back in, you simply just drop it in. I use two fingers, and I just walk it in. Just a few fingers. Now, when you go to put the other jet in, the main jet, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll grab the carburetor after and I'll snug it, okay? We're not gonna snug it right at the moment. This car, I want to here we go. Sun's coming up, it's really, really bright first thing in the morning. See how this carburetor, the screwdriver does not fit this carburetor? Do not use it, you're gonna ruin that jet. Okay? You are going to absolutely ruin the jet. Why? Because this screwdriver fits in there too sloppy, does not fit all the way across, and is very, very loose. And that is what ruins the jets. And makes it harder to, you know, grab grip. So you're going to find a screwdriver that fits over to at least 75% of the jet, if not the whole jet. Okay? And fits in there fairly snug. I mean, you want you the snugger the better, okay? And then I can take it off with this one. I don't need to pull this jet off, but that's how you would do it. Um, if you have a screwdriver that has a chip on the end.